Hey friends, thanks for stopping by. Um, if you are watching this video, then that means you have found my GitHub page and you are browsing through some of my software. So congratulations and thank you for uh, checking it out. So this program here that you found is actually my final project for software security, CS305 at Southern New Hampshire University. Um, this program, you can find the documentation, of course, in the documentation folder in the, uh, the tree that you're in currently. Um, but I'll give you a quick rundown. So basically what I was given was a program that was just this. And the idea was to make it more secure, uh, but I wasn't given too much else direction beyond that. So I kind of took some creative liberties and added a whole bunch of extra things in there uh, myself. So here's the breakdown. First of all, it is a uh, the beginnings of a REST server. It does not incorporate all of the uh, components of REST, of course. You won't find a, a CRUD class or anything like that. Uh, but it does incorporate the uh, Spring Framework, so it will run as a server application in your web browser. I did add in HTTPS protocol, so it is a little bit more secure. And additionally, one of the stipulations of the project was to use a checksum value. So the idea was to take in uh, a query string or a default string and use a checksum to basically turn it into a hash. Uh, and our ha the hash, hash algorithm that we wanted to choose was up to us. I chose hash uh, the SHA-512 hash. So let's take a look at what that actually looks like in the server controller class here. All right, so this is the very generic version of it. Uh, so we've got our request mapping for slash hash here. The uh, query that it's looking for is, of course, the name. The default value is my name, uh, but a user can put in whatever name they want to if they want. Uh, additionally, I added a, a um, option to query for a specific algorithm as well, but the default is, of course, the SHA-512. So if a user chooses a different algorithm, they can input that as well into the address bar, and I'll show what that looks like in a second. Um, additionally, this does throw a no such algorithm exception, so in the event that the user puts in an algorithm that doesn't exist, and all algorithms, of course, that are acceptable are any that are found within the message digest um, within Java, the, it will throw a... Um, error into the web browser but not stop the program from running which is you know what we ultimately want um, at the end it will return everything as a string to the web browser uh, including the name that was input the algorithm that was used uh, and of course the uh, value of the hash so let's take a look at what that looks like real quick by running this uh, in our web browser so we'll just go to run as java application let spring boot do its thing boot itself up and then we'll just go right here where it's already ready to go loaded in. Uh, so HTTPS slash slash localhost H4 or 8443 slash hash. Uh, and there we go. There's my name. There's our SHA-512 algorithm that we use. And here's our hash value. And as I mentioned, I did uh, add a couple options in here. So if I wanted to change, for instance, the name, uh, we'll just send in a query as we'll put in my brother's name. There we go. And we go and it hashes his name instead and let's say I wanted to hash his name as something else we'll just put the and in there and then the uh, value it's looking for is algorithm and I guess I should have chosen something that I can spell a little bit easier but we'll change this to SHA-256 and there we go so there's a hash in SHA-256 and of course as I mentioned uh, if you pick something that doesn't exist like SHA-255 it will instead throw an error for you but the application will continue to run uh, a couple other things that I added in here too um, I decided that I wanted a little bit more uh, a little bit more to do I guess in here uh, so I added a couple other uh, objects to be created so I added a greeting object which is just essentially a simple greeting and a greeting endpoint uh, that takes in again a name uh, and again it will hash that name but this time uh, it returns it as in JSON format uh, so if I go back here and oops, if I go back here and remove all of this and say reading again my name is going to be the default there we go uh, so you see the same thing as before uh, but this time around it gives us an ID that increments every time you uh, change it up so if uh, I change this here for again going with my brother's name he gets an ID of two and of course a new hash value and it tells you what the algorithm is as well and then likewise the last thing I wanted to do and I got this idea from an earlier project in the class was the document uh, data uh, so here 
uh, we've got a document object that also can be uh, passed in, uh, or I should say queried from the web browser. And the doc controller here does essentially the same thing as the greeting controller as before. It takes in, uh, this time the name is allegedly going to be the business name. Uh, and it will, again, follow the same procedures as all the other uh, versions before the other controllers. It will hash all of that information, but instead of hashing the name, it hashes the entire document object uh, and then returns, of course, an ID and the algorithm that it uses, which in this case is the default SHA-512. There's no options to change it. And then the checksum value. So this one is uh, found at the endpoint doc, D-O-C. Uh, so we can take a look at that real quick. And all it does is create the document object for us. So if I just type in doc, there we go. Uh, so we've got a document ID of one. The business name is, of course, business. I can change that if I want to. So if I query in something like Amazon, there we go. There's Amazon's hash value right there. And what this is doing is it's actually um, creating a document object right here, this doc data object, which contains the ID, of course, the business name, um, and uh, that those are the two main things right there. And then what it does is actually takes the entire document object and hashes it. And I'm going to show how that works in a different video. But there is basically the entire program. Um, and if you want a little bit more information, feel free to read up on this. Uh, it gives you some info about uh, the document hashing specifically down here at the bottom. Because all of these uh, controllers all use the exact same uh, checksum method right here that's found in the checksum class and I did that for um, encapsulation of course we wanted to make sure that all controllers were using the same checksum algorithm so that there wasn't any repeat of code or anything like that so that can be found here in the checksum class so anyways hope you like this hope you find this useful and helpful and feel free to use any of these parts in your own program or uh, maybe you just learned something new today either way uh, I'm glad you stopped by so uh, with that, take care, and I'll see you in the next video.